Now, doctors at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital are alarmed by high rate of stroke cases in young people as teenagers are now being affected by the condition. Everyone in four persons globally is likely to be affected by the medical emergency, which is one of the top causes of death. But not all cases are hopeless because people survive it. Join Mrs. Komala Adum has more in this report. Everyone in four persons globally is likely to get a stroke. Men, women and even children are reporting to the stroke unit of a Kolibu teaching hospital defying the long-held stereotype that only older people get stroke. Neurologist Dr. David Brodimendz says the youngest case the unit has had to see is a 13-year-old boy. The incidence of stroke does increase as you grow older, but we've noticed that younger and younger people are getting strokes. We have very busy lifestyles, we're having more stress, we're having higher levels of hypertension. I think the youngest person that we've had here with a stroke has been 13. So people even as young as 13 can get strokes. You're not too young to have a stroke. He speaks about causes of a condition and why it is not one for only older people. There are certain things we call risk factors that make people more likely to have strokes. The most common one is high blood pressure or hypertension. Because as you can imagine, if you have blood moving in a closed system, which is our blood vessels, and the pressure is high, there's a high likelihood that there will be some changes or some accidents that will happen to the vessels. It happens in the brain, then it's called a stroke. Other things can also cause strokes like um, diabetes or high blood sugar. High cholesterol levels can also be risk factors for strokes. Survival rates for stroke patients depend on a number of factors, including the type and the kind of a care patient gets. The more comprehensive the care, the higher the chance of survival. <coughs> I have come to the Kolibu Teaching Hospital to meet 51-year-old stroke survivor, Johnson Deity. He is here to see the doctor as part of his bi-weekly review sessions, having been struck by the disease in January this year. After having an increase of high BP, the next thing that I knew, I knew was that I was gone. When I came back to myself, actually, I was told that I was a dead person. That is what my relative told me. My big sister told me that I was longer than the bed that I was lying on. I was huge. My head was big. It was just a dead body that was on the bed. Unlike many stroke survivors, Johnson can walk freely without aids. He has no visible disability. My wife told me that they have to start everything with me like a baby. Because I could not walk. I could not do anything. Uh, I have to be bathed. Uh, I was put on pampers. Uh, I can easily go lose myself, just fall myself. They have to clean me up. It was so much. We'll see you in about a month's time. All right. Dr. Brody Menz and other specialists here at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital have been working to rehabilitate stroke patients like Johnson. One of the most important things that go into survival will be the type of stroke and then how quickly the, the person comes to the hospital. Because the quicker you come to the hospital to receive medical attention, the higher the survival rate. And then also the type of stroke. If you have a very large stroke affecting the large area of the brain, survival definitely will be less than if you have a small stroke affecting a small area of the brain. Other things that go to affect survival is, one of the common things is infection. If you have a stroke and it's affected your ability to move or your ability to swallow, then you have a high risk for infections. So maybe the stroke itself doesn't kill you immediately, but because you can't swallow and you try and take some water and it goes the wrong way into your lungs and you get an infection in your lungs, or you're in bed for a long time, you're not moving, you get sores and ulcers and they get infected. Those can all add to the risk of dying from a stroke. At the stroke units, patients on admission are receiving care from care nurses and other medics. It is a very uncomfortable place to be, seeing patients unable to help themselves at anything, lying helplessly on the sick beds. But Johnson looks back to his days in this unit and is thankful he is alive. Where I was, anyone that was brought around where me, I was lying, died. So about five people who were even around you, 
uh, who came to sleep beside your bed and in front of you, crab, everybody left. So me like it, I could not make friends until I came back home. I don't know who, I don't know those who were there. Even the nurses, I don't know those who were there. It is after I came back that I could see that ah, I saw this person somewhere, I saw this person somewhere. Uh -huh. But I don't make people out. He wants people to pay attention to their bodies and report any abnormalities as early as possible. Dr. Bodimens believes prevention is the best cure. However, early detection could also increase survival chances. The risks are your high blood pressure, your if you have high sugar diabetes, or if you have high cholesterol levels. So you need to know, you need to check. So you need to go to a hospital and be screened. And nobody is too young to have a stroke. And then also watch your diet, take more fruits, more vegetables. These things have been shown to reduce the chances of stroke. And then exercise. There are many who are not as lucky as Johnson Deity. Some have died. Others have been permanently disabled. But there is hope. The stroke unit of a Kolibu teaching hospital is on a campaign to increase awareness of a deadly disease and draw attention to the risk factors and triggers as well as treatment options. As I leave the unit, shaking by the revelations, I am advised to check my blood pressure counts. Well, I'm fine, according to what I'm told. Are you? As the world marks Stroke Day on Tuesday, October 29, the caution is, live your best life. You are not too young to be struck by stroke. So yes, it is disturbing that young people are getting stroke, but it is also comforting to note that it is not, uh, all hope is not lost if you do have it. We know that stroke is a deadly condition and it requires multidisciplinary professional care to manage. Talk of the psychiatrist that you need, the neurologist that you need, the physiotherapist and the like. A lot of money in there as well. But what foods at least can we eat to minimize our stroke risks? We're joined in the studio by a dietitian at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital uh, Diet Therapy Unit, Andrew Bebby, and we've heard about the incident rate that one in four is likely to get a stroke globally. I'm going to ask him how crucial dieting is in reducing that risk. Mr. Bebby, you're welcome. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. So the question is, I mean, it, can we prevent um, stroke by eating right? Yes, we can. Okay, tell us about I mean, that. Yes. So when it comes to these conditions, it's more of a lifestyle thing. Mm. All right, so the kind of diet you eat can influence your blood pressure, it can influence your blood sugar. Okay. And if you if you're just on medication and you're not really watching your lifestyle or your diet, it's very likely that your sugars or your pressures might not be controlled well. Mm. And this is what can lead to the And those are the things that cause strokes. Yes. So is it alarming to what extent is it alarming that young people are getting that now? Um I mean it's alarming. Is it's it, not, is it's it not normal? On them. Yes. Is it, it normal? Is I mean like not normal, normal, but is it really uh, what's the expression? Well, it's not, it, normal, right? it's not normal. It's not normal at all. It used to be a condition of the aged. And that's because aged people are not able to eat properly? Not really. Not really. Age is a risk factor for stroke. Okay. Yes, but okay. now more younger people are getting diabetes, okay. they're getting hypertension, there are a lot of stress, there's depression, all of that. And these are all things that are linked to um, stroke. Okay. Right, stroke so looking at the things that we eat, you said that diet your diet can yes. actually help you reduce it but what kinds of food yes. should so you stay away from stay away from yes. so i mean i'll touch a bit on the risk factors okay all right we don't really have should i say um, a direct cause of stroke hmm. but what we have are what we call the risk factors okay when we say a risk factor it means that when we take um, that person you are more you are more likely to get that condition okay. let's say you're walking by the roadside the one walking on the pavement has a very low probability of being hit by a car. Mm -hmm. The one walking in the road has a very high probability of being hit by a yes. Okay. So when it comes to stroke, uh, one of the risk factors is alcohol intake. Alcohol? Yes. Okay. I mean, people say... How regular? I mean, alcohol intake. There's nothing like reg how regular it is. Oh, so if someone takes alcohol, say, every... Weekend. Weekend, yes. And someone takes alcohol once a year, and someone does not take alcohol, alcohol at, at all, all yes. like me. Yes. Where, where, where are the, where are the risk factors? A we weekend, once a year, every day. I mean, yes. Yeah, so every day, even weekend, once a year, 
All right. Really? Yes. We have different we have different tolerance levels. Okay. All right. So you can say because I drink I five bottles and I drink one bottle, it means I'm safe. So once you have alcohol in your system, yes. you're prone to it. Yes. So if you take if you abuse the alcohol, there's what we call atrial fibrillation, which okay. affects the way the way your heart pumps blood. Mm -hmm. All right, yes. And so if there's atrial fibrillation, then there's a probability of you getting a black clot going into your brain, and that's mm. what causes a stroke. Okay. And also, alcohol can make you gain weight. All mm. right. And obesity is a risk factor for developing a stroke. Hey. Yes. <laughs> so alcohol has a lot of calories. Okay. One gram of alcohol gives you seven calories. Mm. So it might seem as if it's a drink, but you can actually gain weight from eating, from drinking alcohol. Okay, so that's the connection with the alcohol. Yes, yeah, so ob obesity, it can also make your cholesterol levels Because there are people who are up. obese who are not necessarily alcohol, who yes. don't really take, yes. uh, take in alcohol. Yes, yes. So alcohol, the, the linkage with alcohol to stroke is the, the fact that it makes you obese. Yeah, it does a lot of things. So obesity is one of them. Okay. Uh, what? Hypertension, okay. also one of them. Okay. Diabetes, also one of them. I see. All right, atrial fibrillation, one of them. Okay. High blood cholesterol, one of them. So stay away from alcohol. alcohol. Yes, there's, no, there's no safe amount of alcohol. Banku, kenke, wache. Yes, so, yes, so, I mean, when it comes to the food, uh -huh. every food that we eat is okay. okay. All right. Uh, when it comes to the, uh, the general healthy population, you can eat virtually anything. Okay. All right. Yes. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> you, can eat, you can eat virtually anything. Okay. But like I said, it's based on the risk factors. Mm. So there's someone who is having diabetes, eating kinky, eating bankum, someone has hypertension, eating kinky, eating bankum, depending on their other risk factors, it could increase the risk of having the condition. So if you are eating your kinky in excess, mm -hmm. all right, that could lead to obesity. Yes. Or you are eating your bankum late, you are eating your food late, mm -hmm. all right, late night eating. That causes stroke too? Indirectly, all right. Okay. That could cause... Because it will make you obese. It will make you obese. It will cause what we call trunkal obesity. So you end up having a lot of fat around your waistline, your stomach region. Okay. Yes. And the more fat you have in these areas, the higher your chance of getting a stroke. Oh, how is that? Yes. It's, you know, when it comes to science, not everything can be explained. Okay. But we seem to see it in those populations. Okay. So when you see those who have stroke, they have, um, should I say, a bigger waistline. Okay. All right, yes. So then you so, can so these identify. Are from, from experience, uh, pretty much. Yes, from okay. experience, yes. I see, I see. Uh, uh, and uh, we, regarding those that we've just heard from a survivor, yes. we've just heard a story. I mean, I used to think that people who had stroke end up, you know, sometimes losing their lives or Life, that it was yes. a permanent condition. But we're seeing that it's obviously not. For those who may, yeah, you want to yes. say something? Yes, I mean, it's not permanent, it's all right? Not. Yeah. Okay. Like the doctor said, it's based on how big the injury is. The injury to the brain. The brain is, yes. So the brain helps us do everything. Mm. All right. So let's say your brain is like a ball, 100%. Only 1% gets the injury. The brain is able to compensate for the 1%. Mm. So the 99% is able to do everything. Okay. But the more you keep getting the stroke, or the more you delay treatment, then the injury can become bigger. Now 10%, okay. now 20 now 30 and it becomes almost impossible for your brain to compensate. Okay. And such people will be sort of disabled for life. Wow. So for those yes. who have that condition, who, those, those who have stroke, yes. assuming those who have just experienced, experienced it, they, they, they're seeing, are, are there any signs that you can actually point to before it becomes a bigger problem? Um, so some people report that they have um, severe headache, some say they feel dizzy, with limbs with loss of vision. Okay. I mean, yes. But we have what we call like the cardinal sense of stroke. Mm -hmm. And there's an acronym for that, which is FAST. Mm -hmm. F -E -S F -E S T. S T. Yes, mm -hmm. FAST. So the, a the F stands for the face. Face. Yeah, the face. Okay. Yes. So when the person is experiencing with that headache or that dizziness and you ask them to smile, right? If there's a weakness on a side of their face, so maybe the smile is like their mouth is crooked. They're or they unable to smile properly. Yes, properly. Okay. Yes. Or you can't raise their eyebrows. Maybe one eyebrow is raised, the other one is down. Okay. It means there's a weakness at that side. Oh, wow. Yes. And the A stands for the arms. So you ask them to lift, raise both hands. Mm -hmm. If one hand is like 
it can't really raise well okay. or their legs okay they can't really raise it well it's a weakness there okay and then the speech you ask them to say something they can yes yeah, suddenly so like their tongue becomes sort of heavy they can't move their lips okay. they can't talk they can't swallow and then yes yeah, so then we, with these signs we see that the T stands for time mm -hmm. all right in the moment you see these signs you have to get help very fast okay because okay. we see that lost time is lost brain okay right. well i hope that this has um, helped somebody um i hope that this has really helped somebody to identify you know so you can call it the the pointers that should alert you that you should seek you should seek help but like you saw uh, in that story that Komla I don't put together all hope is not lost if you do have it for people who have it right now what advice yeah. will you give them so yes so like you rightly mentioned mm -hmm. it's a team effort okay all right so you can't just say i need my medication hmm. all right so you can you, you can rely on your medication it's a lifestyle thing so outside your medication your diet mm -hmm. some people end up having swallowing problems mm -hmm. which means they have to f be fed through a tube hmm. all right for those who can swallow to some extent but cannot chew also need some uh, form of modification in their diet okay. because they cannot chew yes and then yeah, some people can eat normally all right yeah, they can eat virtually anything mm -hmm. but you focus on um, the pre-existing conditions they had okay. so maybe they are hypertensive you are diabetic we have to focus on the kind of diets that will help your sugars and your blood pressure to be okay okay yes so right. apart from the diet then there's physiotherapy if you don't do physiotherapy you might not recover fully mm. all right like i mentioned the brain is able to compensate and it compensates with physiotherapy okay so the patient is able to move their hands that that ability Th that is lost uh, okay but when they're in the physiotherapy their brain sort of rewires okay and learns that thing again all right so okay. you can have a stroke and just sit down and expect to be healed It'll only get worse you might be healed but you cannot move you can't do your okay daily stuff okay there's okay. also what we call occupational therapy it's also uh, related to uh, physiotherapy but it's a bit different mm. for OTs they believe that everything you do is an occupation mm. so brushing your teeth is an occupation holding your fork and knife to eat is an occupation all right sending your check is an occupation okay so if someone gets a stroke I mean, some of them cannot really do these activities again. Mm. They will need occupational therapy to help teach them how to... So you have to, to let them do something so yeah. then they get used to exactly. it. Exactly. Okay. We also have the psychologists. Most stroke patients suffer from depression. Okay. All right. And depression is actually a risk factor for developing the stroke. Mm. It means if you let the patients go away without a psychology review, they could get a stroke again. Okay. Yes, because some of these people... I mean, imagine you could feed yourself at first you could dress yourself now you can't do that now someone has to bath you i mean clean you it's it can be very depressive right. depressing yes okay but so tomorrow 29th of uh, october yeah. is uh world, world stroke, stroke day, day. yes a world stroke day i hope that this helps you uh, but let me, let me take a very final word from you right. as we wrap up world stroke day what should people know as you leave the studio yes today? so and um, the theme for this year's world stroke day is don't be the one <laughs> all right uh, that had the stroke you don't want to be the one because we are saying that one in four people will have a stroke in their lifetime okay but, but don't i don't want be to be one. that one okay all right so we are having a screening in kolibu okay. at the four courts of the um, pediatric intensive units mm -hmm. all right so you can just come and have free? your yes yeah, for free for okay. free all right so you have all the team members there so come and check your blood pressure your weight your height your body fat visceral fats blood pressure and we have doctors and dietitians to advise it's advice okay yes. thank right. you very much andrew for coming okay. andrew Prabhi is with the uh strokes is a stroke unit yes stroke unit at the kolibu teaching hospital he's also a dietitian um, helping us to understand you know some of the things that happen but i hope that this has been really um, um helpful for you uh, tomorrow is a day for uh well stroke is well stroke day yeah. they're saying that come by the kolibu teaching hospital they're doing a free screening they do take advantage of this do not be the, the one, one in four that <laughs> gets a stroke yeah. in a year is it in a, in a lifetime in a lifetime in okay a lifetime. do not be the one thank you very much for coming once again